is about the non salat prayers, super erogatory prayers, namaz al shah salat al -Bay. These are only for the elderly. These are only for those who are now retired. You know what is it? The young man has to do with it. I wish that was the case, but that is not the case. So when you have this opportunity, you have this time, you start engaging in this, you know, in the extra uh, form of ibadah and worship, and that will really build, you know, when we get up in the morning to offer Salat al-Fajr. The reason why we get up in the morning to offer Salat al-Fajr is because we're afraid of Jahannam. That if you don't pray this fear, you know, there's a consequence to that. But when you st stand up, Prior to that wajib salat to offer that 11 rak'at of salat al it's not because you're afraid of Jahannam or you are, you know, greedy for paradise. You're stepping up or you're standing up, you know, a half hour prior to that salat al fajr which is an obligation to go and offer that salat that shows that you have something beyond that. It's not merely avoiding Jahannam and, you know, attracting Jannah towards yourself. Rather, it's beyond that. You consider Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be worthy of worship. Therefore, you're spending that much time ahead of the obligation set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get up in the morning. That takes skills. So therefore, this is the time. Summer, you have two months, more than two months, to go ahead and really get this uh, uh, connection stronger. It can also help you develop a stronger love for and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. When you do offer these extra offers or extra salat and you know salat al layl and wufayla and whatnot and nafila, this will make you more and more reliant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will make you do more and more tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him for anything and everything that you want. Ask for forgiveness, ask for guidance, build that connection. It will help carry you through any difficulties, temptations, and trials that you will face in this very, um, you know, the, the, the experience of four years of undergrad. You know, there are many adjectives that could be placed as to what kind of time that is. Number four, get organized by making a comprehensive schedule. So, if you're keeping count, number one was adjusting your Islamic lens. Number two, building a Muslim network. Number three, start engaging in extra ibadah. Number four, get organized by making a comprehensive schedule. You know, you and I should always do that. See how we become so punctual when it comes to the month of Ramadan? Throughout the year, we do things according to our own schedule. But in the month of Ramadan, we do things according to the schedule set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And during the month of Ramadan, outside of the month of Ramadan, you might pray on time, you might pray later on, because the time of Salat is longer. Right? We might not pray Lord at 1 o'clock, for example. We might pray Lord at 6.30, 7 o'clock. Combine it with Lord. But when it comes to Ramadan, we see that there's punctuality that comes into our life. So while you will be making class schedule before the semester or quarter begins, don't stop there. Schedule what you will be doing on at least some of your breaks and weekends as well. Great opportunity. You live in this community. You have a place where you can come for Salat al-Fajr in the morning and be with other fellow community members. And if you haven't come thus far, you'll find that time to be the most peaceful time. You'll find that time to be the most peaceful time in order for you to really engage in, in connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, take this opportunity, and this goes for even others. You know, as parents, uh, now that your kids uh, don't have to be in bed so early, or they don't have to have other commitment in the morning, waking them up four in the morning, bringing them to mosque on the weekend, they can go back to sleep again. We all do that. They can go back to sleep again. They can sleep till 12 o'clock later on. So do invest in this, and you'll find uh, worthwhile. This is important because if this time isn't planned for, it can be easily wasted on doing wrong things. And do I really need to go and count all the wrong things? You know, just one thing that is here is in our hands. We can spend hours and hours on it. We won't even realize how much time we've spent. So many distractions that are found on our gadgets. Well, there's a lot of time to, you know, use and consume and to be able to put it to proper use. Sixty Imam, you know, my Jafar Sadiq. Allah. Man ghubina umaruhu sa'atan ba'da sa'atan. 
Euphoric, deceived is the one. Is not the one who has lost his property, wealth, or his possession. Rather, it is someone who has burned moments of his life and has gained nothing out of it. You know how much time we waste and how many moments of our life we burn every hour, every day, and don't gain anything out of it. This mean, that means making time for not just praying, studying, eating, your, you know, um, schools, uh, MSAs, or APSA groups, or extracurricular meetings or activities. It also means deciding what you will do for fun and how often you will use that time. You don't have to plan it minute by minute, but you should strive to have a balance of all these things that you do not burn yourself out, miss prayers, or fail a class. Our seventh Imam, Imam Musa al-Qadim he said, Allah abhors the servant who wastes his time and doesn't utilize it properly. On the day of judgment, on the day of Qiyamah, we will be asked for what we did as far as our life is concerned. And I don't need to explain the effect of social media that has on our lives. Some of us are activists on social media. We need to have our presence on social media. And with that, it requires a lot of consumption of our time. So Imam continues by saying, Inna This is really a beautiful scene. And Shalom continues with it. Imam said, indeed, loss of time is worse than loss of soul. Loss of time is worse than loss of soul. Why? You give your life to waste it to better. Waste, it is better that you give your soul. Why? Because, لِأَنَّ فَوْتَ الرُّوْءِ إِنْ قِتَاءُ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ because draw, dying means being disconnected, disconnected from other creation. So, moth comes, you're disconnected with other creation. But when you disconnect with, or you, you know, when you disobey, or when you lose this time, or you waste this time, it says when a person dies, he's disconnected with other people. They take him to cemetery, they bury him, but when the time is wasted, it is going further away from reality and haq. So, you know, in Qatawal soul, this, this soul of yours, when it's disconnected, all that happens is that you die. But when you waste time, you are wasting haq and reality. Ad-dunya sa'atun faja'alha ta'at. That this is, this dunya is a few hours. You know, if you to realize that it's only here for a couple of hours. In between, someone showed me a quote. Say, so you know what that dash in between your date of birth and date of demise on your headstone means? When you look at the headstone, the guy is sitting here and appreciate this. When you look at the headstone, what do you have? You have two dates. Date of birth, 1940. Date of death, 2020. There's a dash in between. He said, people are looking at the two dates. When was this person born? When did he die? He said, that dash in between is the most important thing. What did he do in between these two times? The time that he was born and the time he passed away. That dash in between represents all that you've done and accomplished in your life. To make sure that that dash is worthwhile, meaningful, when people stand on the tombstone, when they talk about it, that that dash in between has to be bigger because this person, his personality was much beyond that. Sixth Imam said, I don't like to see a young person unless in one of two situations. Either he is learned, well-educated, or in the way of becoming learned. Therefore, use your time wisely, inshallah. College will be a time of growth, new friendships, and opportunities, as well as fun. May you emerge a stronger Muslim, ready to contribute to your community and the world with all that you gain from these few years of your life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity, ability, especially for young ones who are entering into this new phase of their lives, to be able to apply the teachings of Islam, apply the teachings of Quran, Masumin alayhi musallahu wa salam. Inna asu hadith wa abdullah wa dhikrullah wa billahi wa shatan wa jim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحمد وتواصوا بالصبر لا